Hi there, I'm Austin Andrus of IngeniousDesigns.com. When I was a little boy, I imagined that as a grown-up, I would have a library of leather-bound editions of all my favorite books. But when I eventually decided to make that dream a reality, I quickly discovered that professionally bound books are expensive. What's more, some uncultured plebeians had neglected to make leather-bound editions of some of my favorite childhood books, like the Star Wars Expanded Universe, or The Amazing Spider-Man. Not to be deterred, I channeled my inner Thanos and decided... Fine. I'll do it myself. Eighteen months and about fifty books later, I'm ready to share with you the techniques that I've been refining to turn this into this at home. In this video, we'll be focusing on the thing that gave me the most trouble to perfect, and that's gilding the page edges with a golden mirror finish. It sounds like a small thing, but it's really the secret sauce that can make your homebound books almost indistinguishable from professionally bound ones. If you're just here for the leather covers, that's fine too. Part two of this video series is coming out soon and it's just for you. Well, that's enough looking at my face. Should we get making? The first thing to do is to remove the pages, also known as the text block, from the old book cover. In a hardcover book, the text block is glued to end papers, which in turn connect to the cover. Soft cover books work similarly, except that the cover and the end papers are the same thing. Hardcover books usually have some fabric or mesh reinforcing the spine as well, which you will need to cut. I like to save the covers of the books I cannibalize. They won't be useful for this project, but I can use them later when I'm binding smaller books. The next task is to make new end papers. I like to use cardstock or thick paper for durability, but any paper will technically work. Fold the paper in the direction that it bends most easily. The manufacturing process gives all papers a grain, the direction in which most of the paper fibers are aligned. The paper in books should be folded along the grain. This is because as time passes and humidity changes, paper grows and shrinks across the grain. This is why old books tend to have uneven pages on their long sides, while the top and bottom stay relatively smooth. If papers are inserted the wrong way, however, the book's binding will prevent the pages from changing shape uniformly, causing bulges and wrinkles. Glue the new end papers to only the last one quarter to one half inch of the side of the text block that's closest to the spine. Throughout this project, I'll be using a tacky craft glue, which is inexpensive and works well for all my book binding needs. I always go over my glue with a brush to ensure a uniform coat for the best adhesion. Once the end papers are secured, it's time to smooth the page edges. To do this, I start by sandwiching the text block between two thick pieces of chipboard, usually scraps from making other book covers. Then I put that sandwich inside another sandwich, made of wooden boards cut a little larger than the finished book will be. Finally, the high-fiber double-decker book sandwich is secured tightly with a couple of large C-clamps. The position of every part is important. The chipboards extend a few millimeters past the wood, and the text block sticks out just a millimeter or two past that, so that the lowest page is about even with the chipboards. Once this setup is complete, it's time to get sanding! <laughs> This is the most tedious part of the entire bookbinding process, but it's absolutely critical. The smoother you make your pages, the better the final product will be. Vacuum and buff the pages with a clean cloth to remove all the sawdust. You'll know you're done when the text block is polished and reflective. To gild the pages, I use foil quill, a thin metallic foil with a heat-activated backing. This video isn't sponsored, but I have to admit that after experimenting with everything from spray paint to 24 karat gold leaf, nothing beats foil quill for giving me a quick, easy mirror finish that can compare with professional gilding. Place a strip of foil over the pages and activate the adhesive by ironing it on the wool setting, about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Work thoroughly and iron out every last wrinkle. Make sure you iron over every edge as well. 
It does take a few minutes, but if you try to rush things, the gilding will be patchy and you'll have to repair it later. When you're ready, remove the plastic backing and a shiny layer of gold foil will be left behind on the book. It's optional, but to get a deeper gold color, I like to apply a second coat of foil. However many layers you apply, when you're finishing the last one, go over the whole area with the iron to heat it up. Then, immediately after taking the plastic off, use that heat to melt a little beeswax on top of the foil. The wax will help to seal and protect the gilding and keep it from flaking off. Once the wax cools, use a clean cloth to buff the surface back up to a mirror shine. Remove the text from the press and separate the pages with a little tapping and by gently bending the text block. Finally, rinse and repeat the whole process on the other two sides of the book. At this point, the text block is almost ready to get a new cover. We just need to add a few finishing touches, like gluing a bookmark ribbon at the top of the book, as well as adding headbands to the top and bottom. The last step is to reinforce the text block with some thin fabric. The eagle-eyed among you will notice that I'm using leftover silk from my airbending staff project. Glue the fabric to the spine and end pages. I like to overlap the headband fabric a bit as well, just to keep those little pieces in place. And with that, this text block is ready for a cover. It may not look like much now, but by the time that we're done with it, it'll blend in right next to the professionally bound books. What'd I tell you? I'm excited to share the rest of the journey with you, but that's probably best left for another video. I look forward to seeing you there.